Hello, and today we're not going to talk about a specific timepiece, but instead talk about one of the main strategic and well-guarded secret component of any mechanical watch, the hairspring. The pulsating heart of any mechanical watch, and will take you somewhere special where no camera has ever gone before. The hairspring, or spirale in French, is part of the regulating organ of a watch. But before going into the details of this, let me very quickly come back on how a watch works, and to make it very, very simple, we'll make a car analogy. So first you need energy, fuel, which is stored in a barrel. This energy is charged up either by manually winding the watch or with automatic watches with the movement of the rotor. So yes, it's green fuel, good for the environment. Watchmaking is good for the environment. So this energy is then released and activates all the gears which ultimately gives you time. And again, to make it very, very simple, the more gears you have, the more functions. Power reserve indication, chronograph function, date, big date, etc. This is the engine part of your timepiece, even though it works more like a gearbox of your car. And at the end of this, you will find a combination of the escapement and the regulating organ of the watch, whose combined function is to liberate smoothly the energy stored in the watch. So to continue again with this very simplified approach, escapement in French is called échappement, which literally translates in English as the exhaust system. Think of your car. If you place a potato at the back of your exhaust, your car's engine will simply stop and it will probably mess it up too and will most probably need some kind of fixing. Well, additionally, changing the type of exhaust system will also have an impact on the car's running performance. Sport car exhaust systems are very different from the one found on small size engine sedans. They let more of those intense combustion gases create in the cylinders of your engine to come out more directly, reason why they pollute more too. So I think you see where I'm getting at, but in a watch, it's really the combination of both the escapement and the regulating organ that have this similar exhaust function. And when I say smooth, this is really the key. On your car, the amount of exhaust gases coming out changes if you're accelerating, for instance. It depends on the RPMs. But in a watch, these RPMs should better be fixed if you want your watch to be accurate. And this level of RPM is called the frequency at which your watch is running, which is expressed in hertz or beats per hour. So the escapement's role is to liberate the energy and to transform a circular movement, the gears, into an oscillating movement, the tic-tac. And the regulating organ is there to determine the intervals at which this energy is liberated. Both of these mechanisms are made up of many very intricate parts and the tourbillon is a fine example of how intricate a regulating organ can be. But today we will not talk about this entire system, this will come in the near future, as well as other detailed explanations that I wanted to do since a very long time. No, today we will focus on this very specific component, the hairspring, which is at the center of the regulating organ and is totally crucial in the proper regulation of your mechanical watch. And the reason we will focus on this today is because we had the very exclusive opportunity of going in one of the rare companies that produces hairsprings themselves, and this is Beauvais. And I can assure you that there aren't that many companies out there that do this themselves, and the ones that do, well, they're very secretive about the fabrication process. It's kind of part of the myth, and that's what you're about to discover now. Beauvais is an integrated manufacturer and they have different facilities specialized in various operations located in different parts of Switzerland. But the main manufacturing facility called Dimier is found in Tramelan, kind of quite far away in the Jura mountain. And in one of the corners of this building, you will find a very well hidden workshop where they make these hairsprays. And this is where we met Vasco, who explained to us the full fabrication process. Well, he kept one or two small details for himself, naturally, but we got to understand the different operations that are being carried out in this atelier. So first of all, it all starts with the base material, and this comes as a coil of metal thread. With one coil, you can do several thousands of hairsprings, and the alloy of metals used is naturally kept well secret. This thread has an initial size of 0.6 mm of diameter, and the cross section is not circular but rectangular. And depending on the type of hairspring you need, meaning depending on the inertia of the balance wheel and the oscillating frequency which has been previously calculated by the watchmakers, well, Vasco will then reduce its thickness to sizes that can vary between 600 to 800 of a millimeter. Yes, we are in the micron territory, meaning smaller than a hair size. 
and the tiniest variation in its diameter can have a huge impact on the final chronometric accuracy of your watch. So once this operation has been achieved, the threads will then be cut in equal length and this length will also depend on the desired characteristic determined by the watchmakers. They are generally rolled 4x4 with the help of a special tool and here starts part of the magic as these assembled threads are cooked in an oven at some very specific temperatures that we will unfortunately never know. Actually, we couldn't even see the oven, part of the myth, I told you. This heating process will change and fix some of the properties of the hairsprings because you really want these hairsprings to be as less vulnerable as possible to outside parameters such as heat or magnetic fields. They are then disassembled one by one and you now see something that we're more used to with this snail-shaped spring. Now that another crucial operation takes place where they will slightly curb the outside end part of the hairspring which will then be directly linked with the balance wheel. At Beauvais they produce two types of hairsprings. You have the more classical flat hairspring but they also produce cylindrical version seen for instance in the Braveheart tourbillon timepiece. These last ones are reputedly more precise because the spring can't slip around its vertical axis. The oscillation is in a certain way more harmonious, like radiating around this vertical axis, but as you can imagine, they are more difficult to fabricate. So each hairspring then goes through what is called the classification process, where they measure the actual torque obtained by each one, and they are then assembled onto the balance wheel, and yet another test will occur. This final precision test will give Beauvais the actual chronometric performance that you will ultimately enjoy in your timepiece. So as you can see, this is really a rather intense manual process and again for me it demonstrates something I really love with watchmaking. Vasco has been doing this job for many years. One could think it could become tedious or very repetitive, but these guys, they do this job with the same passion day after day. And I don't know that many other industries where you will find this same level of commitment to perform your task with such enthusiasm. Well, I really hope that we'll be able to bring to you very shortly some deeper video reports on these little secrets and lesser known aspects of watchmaking. Thanks for your time, all the best, and see you soon.